Okay, so for this first one, they want us to simplify. And we're going to follow order of operations, which you guys know is PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. And we do parentheses first, then exponents. So I'll say parentheses, exponents, and then multiplication division, but from left to right. So if there's a division before a multiplication, we do that first, and then addition, subtraction. So let's see how this plays out in our problem. Well, I'm going to work within the parentheses first. And within the parentheses, we're also going to follow PEMDAS, which means are there parentheses within the parentheses? No. No exponents. So we do multiplication division left to right. Well, it looks like we have a multiplication problem there. So all these other numbers are just spectating, like the 5 before the parentheses, the 3, and the minus 8 squared. So we're doing the parentheses. We still have parentheses, so we have to simplify that. What is 3 plus 12? And again, everything else is going to be spectating. So 3 plus 12 is 15 minus 8 squared. Now, I want to rewrite this. This 5 in front of the 15 is like 5 times 15. So we're going to put a dot there. And it's not the dot like the decimal, which I would have put there, but rather the dot in the midpoint um, between 5 and 15 shows that it's multiplication, and then minus 8 squared. So again, using PEMDAS, the next thing we do is not multiplication, but exponents. So we're going to do exponents this step. So the next thing we're going to have is 5 times 15 minus, and 8 squared, by the way, 8 squared is 8 times 8, which is 64. 2 is the number of times we're going to multiply 8 by itself. That's what that exponent means. You could say 8 squared or 8 to the second power or 8 to the 2. Okay, so that's going to be 64. And then oh, it's like, okay, we go back to PEMDAS. We have a multiplication here and a subtraction here. So we're going to do the multiplication first, which is 5 times 15, and that's going to be 75, and then minus 64. That's just a spectator for now. And the cool thing is 75 minus 64 is 9. And we want to box, circle, or underline our answer so our teacher sees, oh, the student showed his work or her work and boxed the answer. Thanks for helping me see it more easily. So the next thing we have to do is solve some algebraic equations. I want to move number two over here. We have 17 equals y minus 13. Now I had a student, she hated math, but she was awesome at explaining it. <laughs> so that's just one of the quirks of life. And she said, algebra is a game of opposites. So what I want to do is get y by itself. So I'm subtracting 13. She said the opposite of subtracting 13 is adding 13. And again, we practice equality in math. So we're going to do that on both sides. So we have 17 plus 13 is 30, and then minus 13 and plus 13, they cancel intentionally. So we have 30 equals y, and that's the answer for number 2. I'm going to put the number 2 in a circle there so teacher knows, hey, that, that's where the answer is. Now the next problem, we have p plus 14 equals 23. For some of you, you might figure out, oh, well, the opposite of adding 14 is subtracting 14, and I'm going to do it to both sides. I'm just going to put the equal sign between to show that's equality. It cancels on the left. We're left with p on the left side. And the right side, 23 minus 14 is 9. So we get p equals 9. And I'm going to put the number 3 there so the teacher knows that's the answer to number 3. Okay, translate into an algebraic e equation. Oh my gosh. 11 less than. Oh my gosh. Less than, that means we're going to subtract 11. The product of 7 and x. Well, we could write the product because product means multiplication. 7 and x is 7 times x, or some people like it, 7x. So 11 less than that, that would be 7x minus 11. I know you're probably scratching your heads. Like 11 less than, that's the beginning of the sentence. How come it's at the end of the expression? Well, the reason is 11 less than means we're subtracting 11 from what? The product of 7 and x. So we're going to box that. That's our answer to number 4. And then we're going to mosey on down to number five. Oops, sorry. Translate into an algebraic equation and solve. Oh my gosh, two steps. So twice the difference. So twice means two times. Difference means, oh, subtraction. Y and seven. So those are the, the two terms going to be subtracted. Gives 84. Oh, that means e equals 84. So let me just give you what that is. Twice the difference of Y and seven gives 84. So twice, two times, the difference of y and 7, that's y minus 7, gives, it's a code word for equals, 84. 
Now we actually have to solve it. So what do we do? Again, the game of opposites, kind of in um, the order we're trying to strip down everything to get to the Y. So, oh, and that same student, she said, oh, she uses what she called the bullseye method. She said, oh, Y's what we're trying to get. So we get rid of the next thing is the minus seven. And then the next thing we get rid of is this two. So we're going to go outside to the inside of the bullseye. Man, she was just wonderful at explaining that. So we're going to divide both sides by two because instead of multiplying, we divide to get rid of it. So we're going to cancel it. So we're left with y minus seven equals, and then 84 divided by two is 42. And again, the game of opposites, what's the opposite of subtracting seven? Adding seven. And we're going to do that to both sides. So in the end, we have y equals 49. So we did the translating here. Sorry for all this uh, busyness here, but it's two times the quantity, y minus seven equals 84. And we solved it, y equals 49. I'm gonna put the five there so teacher knows, oh, or the instructor or professor, whatever uh, your instructor goes by, knows we have the answer there. Okay, oh my gosh, find all the factors of 72. So what we're gonna do is basically we're gonna do a prime factorization, a factor tree, old school. So two is the first prime number. So if it's an even number like 72, it ends in a two. If a number ends in zero, two, four, six, or eight, it can be divided by two. So we're gonna divide by two, we get two and 36. 36 is an even number, so that's divisible by two. And then we have 18. And then we also further dividing that, that's two and nine. Okay, now nine is an odd number, but it's divisible by three and three. So the prime factorization, I'm going to write for number six, 72 equals, and we're just interested in the final nodes here. Notice how I'm disregarding the 36, the 18, and the nine. I'm just worried about the two or focus on the two, 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 three, and three. So that's two times two times two times three times three. If we had to find the prime factorization, but that's actually going to help us find the factors. So one is a factor of all numbers. 2 is also a factor. Now what we can do is start mixing and matching. We can do 2 times 2. Oh, that's 4. We can do 2 times 3. Oh, that's 6. We can do 2 times 2 times 2. That's 8. We can do 3 times 3. That's 9. And keep on going that way. Some people like to actually divide. Like 1 into 72 is 72. 2 into 72 is 36. 4 into 72 is, oh my gosh, that's, I think, 20. No, it's not 24. What am I thinking? Oh my gosh, 4 into 72 would be 18. Oh my goodness. And then um, 6 into 72 goes 12. 9 into 72 goes 36. So actually, this would suffice as our answer. But to make it nice for a teacher, what we want to do is 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 12. Notice I'm just increasing the order here. It just It's a little better visual for the answer. So I'm going to write number 6, all the factors of 72. Now using that same concept, we're going to find the prime factorization of 132. So again, we're going to write 132 up here, an even number. That's great. So we know 2 goes into it. 2 goes into 32. Well, 2 goes into 13, 6. And then 12, 2 into 12 goes 6. So it's 66. 66 itself is an even number. So that's divisible by 2. And then 33. Oh, lo and behold, an odd number. So 33, that looks like 3 is divisible. It's divisible by 3, my bad. 3 into 33 goes 11 times. So we're going to circle the end parts of this. And so that's going to be 2 times 2 times 3 times 11. If your teacher is a stickler, this can be rewritten another way as 2 squared, because we're multiplying 2 times itself, 2 times 3 times 11. And that's the answer to 7. Now, for the least common multiple of 12 and 20, I'm going to work that to the side, if you'll forgive me for doing that. I'm going to copy and paste it over there. So just give it a second to populate here. So find the least common multiple of 12 and 20. What we're going to do, we're going to do this old school method. Um, old or primitive doesn't necessarily mean bad. 
So I'm going to take 12, that's the lower number, and then 20, that's the larger number. And there's a hint here, if it's divisible by 20, it has to have a zero at the end of it. So what we're going to do is just keep multiplying 12 by numbers, like say 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, until we get a number ending in zero. Usually you'll have to go 3, 4, 5, 6 times to get at least common multiple of two different numbers. So 12 times 2 is 24. That doesn't end in zero, so I have to continue. So I'm just going to write that's multiplied by 2. And then multiply by 3, that's 36. Still doesn't end in zero, so it's not going to work. We're going to keep going. Undaunted, 4 times 12 is 48. Still not ending in zero, so we can go 5. 5 times 12 is 60. Ooh, let's hope 20, when we start multiplying it by numbers, gives us a 60. So 20, 40, um, multiply, oops, by 2, and then multiply by 3. 20 times 3 is 60. Yes! So number 8, the LCM is 60. Yes, we're going to box that answer. Okay, let's continue. Ooh, simplify. Let's do that. So what we're going to do is, oh my gosh, they've got two absolute value problems here, right there. So for number 9, it's absolute value of 8 minus 9 minus absolute value of 3 minus 8. We have to simplify what's inside the absolute value bars. So 8 minus 9 is negative 1. Now, if that's a little freaky for you, let me do this. I'm going to make uh, a line graph right here. So we have like 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1. And by subtracting 9, subtraction goes this way and addition goes this way in a number line to the right and subtraction goes to the left. So what happens is we start at 8 and I'm going to count 9 over. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and we get negative 1. That's where I got that negative 1 from. And then minus the absolute value. Oh, 3 minus 8. So they're giving us another one. Okay, let's do that one in green. We're going to start at 3 and we're going to subtract 8. Oh my gosh, i got to make this a little larger now. So I'm just going to continue this way. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to move this one so we should have more space here. Okay, that's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. Okay, so I happen to know the answer is negative 5. But let me just show you how to do this. We'd start at 3, that's our initial setting, and then we're going to subtract 8. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, something went wrong because I counted 0 twice. Oh my goodness, it is negative 5. Oh, forgive me for that error. Okay, so it is negative 5. If we continue there, I'm just going to write it down here. It's absolute value of negative 1 minus absolute value of negative 5. Okay, let me close that bar there. Now what happens is we take the absolute value of a number, we basically make it positive, which means we're, we're going to take away the signs, any negative signs. So it's going to be 1 minus an absolute value of negative 5, which is be 5. So now it's 1 minus 5. So let me make a little chart for that. So here's 1 where we start, and then 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. We're going to go 5 to the left, so we're going to go, we're going to start at 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's going to be negative 4. Okay, and then for these other problems, I'm going to copy them and move them to the right. So bear with me. If you want to just fast forward about 5 seconds, you're good. Okay. So for number 10, it's negative 2 plus 4 times the quantity, negative 3 plus 7. So again, we're going to work, you know, PEMDAS. That's going to be parentheses first. So it's negative 2 plus 4. They're just spectators for now. Negative 3 plus 7. Now, a fancy way of adding numbers of different signs, instead of saying negative 3 plus 7, because that kind of hurts my brain, we could do 7 minus 3. So 7 minus 3 equals 4. Oh, goodness, we're going to use that one instead. So it's going to be negative 2 plus 4 times 4. Okay, and notice we have a multiplication here, so that's going to take precedence. We're going to do that first. So it's going to be negative 2 plus what is 4 times 4? 16. 
And again, since we're adding the numbers, we can change the order. We can make it 16 plus negative 2. And if you have a positive and a negative in a row, they basically simplify to a negative sign. So that's 16 minus 2, which is 14. So that's the answer for number 10 is 14. Let's do the same magic for number 11. So that's 27 minus, and again, we're going to do parentheses first. So that's going to be, you know, I'll just write it negative 4 minus 7. Now, if you have two numbers that are negative, or basically you're subtracting a number from a negative, you could think of it as adding the numbers. So 4 plus 7 equals 11, and then changing the sign because they're both negative. Because this could be rewritten as negative 4 plus negative 7. Think of it that way. So we add the numbers as positives and then slap a negative sign there. So it's going to be 27 minus negative 4 plus negative 7. 27 minus negative 11. Now when we have two negative signs in a row, students use what's called the double dagger method. They make it a positive. So that's going to work out to be 27 plus 11, which is 38. Now, this is just one way to the right that some students like to add two negatives, okay? Now, if you just knew negative 4 minus 7 is negative 11, you could have skipped all that, but I just wanted to show you one method for those who might want alternative method. So here we have number 12, 28 divided by negative 4 minus 7. Now, the first thing we have here is a division that we want to work out. So 28 divided by negative 4. Well, first we have a positive divided by negative. I know the answer is going to be negative. Now I'm just worried about the number. What is 28 divided by 4? Well, that's 7. So that's going to simplify to negative 7 or minus 7. And then this other minus 7 right here. Well, we're already starting from negative 7, and we're going to go 7 more. So think of that as, remember, we could say it's going to be the opposite of 7 plus 7. That's going to be negative 14. So this is going to work out to be negative 14 as our answer for number 12. Oh my gosh, I didn't put uh, label this as number 11. Okay, we continue undaunted. Translate into an algebraic expression or equation. The sum, meaning addition, 5 and 13, increased by another addition, 11. So it's going to be negative 5 plus 13. That sum increased by 11. And that's going to be our answer for 13. That was, fortunately, that was a short one. Okay, the product means multiply. You guys might still be using the x term rather than the x is variable. But I, I like to use the dot or sometimes parentheses. The product of negative 11 and 8, that's going to be negative 11 I'll put in parentheses, times 8. If we put numbers in parentheses right next to each other, that's what's called implied multiplication. So that's the answer to number 14. I'm going to box that. Now number 15, the quotient of 7 and the sum of negative 4 and m. So basically, it's going to be the sum of negative 4 and m. So that's negative 4 plus m, and the quotient of 7 in that. So basically, we're going to be dividing that by 7. 7 and the sum of negative 4 plus m, right there for number 15. Now, 16, the product, actually on 15, I have some misgivings here. It might be, and I'll put it in the description, I'll find out if it's 7 over negative 4 plus m. I'm not quite sure. But I will check that out to be safe. Okay, number 16, the product of 3 and uh, is negative 51. What? I'm going to assume x. So negative 3x is negative 51. That's going to be the equation because is is an equal sign. Okay. Oh, and that's number 16 there. Box that answer. Let's go down to 17. Okay, negative 6r equals negative 24. I'm going to write that up here. Negative 6r equals 24. First thing is I want to get rid of any negative sign. So I can multiply both sides by negative 1. Now this is street style, what I did originally in this blue. But to be totally official, we have to do it 
on both sides. Basically, it cancels out, because remember the double dagger method, that's going to be 6R on the left-hand side, and 24 times negative 1 is negative 24. And again, the game of opposites, right? We're going to, instead of 6 times R, we're going to divide by 6 on the left-hand side to cancel that. So we'll be left with R on the left side. And then we have to divide negative 24 by 6 on the right-hand side. That's going to be negative 4. So that's the answer for number 17. We continue. Locate the numbers in the number line. 7 eighths, 5 thirds, 3 and 1 quarter, and 5. So I would actually like to write these all as fractions. So 7 over 8, 5 over 3, 3 and 1 quarter. Let me show you that. There's this trick, 3 and a quarter. Students like to do this. They'll do 3 times 4 plus whatever the numerator is. So 3 times 4 plus 1 all over 4. So 3 times 4 is 12. So that's 12 plus 1 over 4 is 13 over 4. So that's what that fraction is. Instead of a mixed number, we have 13 over 4 and then 5. Now, the best thing to do is think of fractions as unfinished division. So 7 divided by 8, that's going to be 8 into 7. So we do that, and it's probably either going to be a repeating decimal or work out pretty easily. 8 doesn't go into 7, but it does go into 70. It goes into 70 8 times, because 8 times 8 is 64. Just keep everything in line. So 70 minus 64 is 6. We're going to drop that 0. 8 into 60. All right, what times 8 gives me a number close to 60? Well, 8 times 8 is 64. I'm going to go with 7, because 8 times 7 is 56. And then we subtract them. I should say draw the line, change the sign. 4 and then 40. 8 times what is 40? Oh, that's 5. So that's 0 0.875. So 7 eighths is 0 0.875. We're going to do the same for all these other um, fractions. 5 divided by 3, that's like 3 into 5. I'm going to put 5.000. So 3 into 5 goes 1, 3 times. Draw the line, change the sign. 5 minus 3 is 2. 3 into 20, well, that's going to go 6 times. I'm going to put the decimal right there. 3 into 20, 6 times, well, oh, sorry, and that's 18. Draw the line, change the sign. 20 minus 18, that's 2. Oh, look, we got a repeater here, so it's 1.66 repeating. So 5 thirds is 1.66 repeating. You could just write 1.6 repeating, same thing. Okay, next one, 13 divided by 4. So we can do 4 into 13 point and probably work out pretty quickly here. 4 into 13 goes 3 times because 4 times 3 is 12. Draw the line, change the sign. 4 into 10 goes 2 times. 2 times 4 is 8. Draw the line, change the sign. Sorry, I did that in reverse order. 10 minus 8 is 2, so 4 into 20 goes 5, so it's 3.25. Oh my goodness, ran out of room here. So we're going to have to just, oops, we're going to have to just move this part and then write that 3, oh, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, 3 and 1 fourth equals 3.25, and then 5 equals 5. So I'm going to move, so we have some space here. And then another line, it looks like 5 is definitely by far the largest number. Um, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. This is not going to be exact, but it's going to be pretty close. Um, 7 eighths is 0.875. So you know what I'll do? I'll color code this. This is going to be 7 over 8 because 0.875 is pretty close to 1. And then the next number, right, is the 5 thirds. That's 1.66. and so 1.66 It's going to be 2 thirds the way there. So 5 thirds is over there. Again, I'm keeping it color coded. And then 3 and a quarter which is 3 and a fourth, that goes right about there. That's 3 and 1 fourth. I probably could have just left it as 3 and a fourth. And then 5, I'm just, he's just going to get grayed out. That's 5. So there's the numbers on the number line. Okay, we continue. Ooh, simplify. Next level of difficulty. It's actually not that bad. The big trick is finding 
common numbers that go into both numerator, denominator, and common uh, variables. Now, so the first thing we do is focus on the numbers 21 and 57. Well, 21 I know is divisible by 3, so that's 3 times 7 p, and then 57. If I divide that by 3, that's 3 times 19 q. Now again, math is all about cancel culture. We want to cancel out the 3s on top. So we have 7p over 19q. And here's the trick. P and Q, they can't be divided by one another because they're not like terms. So that is actually our answer. Oops, my goodness, ran out of ink halfway through that problem. That's going to be 19. Now for 20, ooh, we're going to multiply. Ooh, ooh, this is cool. 3 over 7 times negative 28 over 45. Now here's a trick to this one too. We can cross cancel. 3 goes into both 3 and 45. 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 45 15 times. So I'm going to cross it out and just replace it with these numbers there. We can do the same thing with 7 and negative 28. 7 goes into itself once. 7 goes into negative 28 negative 4 times. So we can rewrite this as 1 times negative 4 over 1 times 15, which actually just works out. We don't have to write the ones, but I just wrote it to be safe. That's negative 4 over 15 as our answer for number 20. Now, going on to 21. I don't like division, okay? Uh, so it, it's going to be kind of a funky way I'm going to set this up. I'm going to write it as negative 6 and 3 fourths times 2 over 9. This is a big trick. Instead of dividing by this fraction and multiply by the reciprocal so much easier now on the side we're going to say oh what is negative six and three fourths i don't like mixed numbers i like improper fractions so negative six times four oops and then plus three that's going to be negative okay six times four is 24 plus three that's going to be negative 27. so what happens is the negative six and three fourths works out to be the numerator is negative 27. We still keep 4 as the denominator and then times 2 over 9. And lo and behold, we can do some still cross canceling because 9 goes into both 9 and negative 27. 9 goes into itself once. 9 goes into negative 27, negative 3 times. I'm going to circle those to know that we still have that as placeholders. And then 2 goes into itself once. 2 goes into 4 two times. Now I can disregard the ones when we're doing division multiplication. So I'm just going to rewrite this as negative 3, oops, oh my goodness, came out as a negative 1, negative 3 over 2. And that's the answer to that one. Okay, now we continue. Negative 3 and 3 fifths divided by 6. Okay, that's like saying divided by 6 over 1. So again, you know, I'm going to do to the side negative of 3 times 5 plus 3. Notice I just want to color code something. I'm multiplying by that denominator, these two numbers, the number in front times the denominator, and then adding, oops, that was supposed to be a different color, and then adding this three. So if you just want to know how I'm doing these problems there. So doing that, that's going to be negative. Okay, three times five is 15, and then plus three which works out to be negative 18. So really, I'm going to rewrite this as negative 18 is the new numerator over 5. Instead of dividing by 6 over 1, multiply by the reciprocal. What's that? That's 1 over 6. Again, we always look for the shortcut if we can cross cancel. Well, both negative 18 and 6 are divisible by 6, so that would be a 1. And then negative 18 is negative 3. And again, I can just disregard the 1, so I'm just going to cancel those. So that works out to be negative 3 over 5 as our answer for 22. Okay, for 23, looks like a little more of the same. We have this mixed number multiplied by a fraction. So 4 and 2 thirds, negative 4 and 2 thirds, you know the trick. We're going to do negative, keep that sign. 4 times that denominator, 3, and then plus 2. So it's going to be negative, what is 4 times 3? That's 12 plus 2. So that's going to be negative 14. So I'm going to rewrite this as negative 14 over 3. 
still times negative 6 over 7. So before I even worry about the numbers here, I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to see this negative times a negative. We have two negatives in a row, double dagger method. So that's good. We know it's positive times a positive, which will yield a positive answer. And then we're going to cross cancel as much as we can. Looks like 7 goes into itself once. I'm not even going to write that because 1s can be disregarded now. And then 14 divided by 7 is 2. So we have a 2 up there. And then the same thing with the 3 and the 6. 3 goes into 3 once. So I'm going to just disregard that. And 3 and a 6 goes 2. So it's 2 times 2. The two numerators multiplied, which is 4. So that's the answer to 23. Okay, we continue. Ooh, negative 2 and a fourth divided by 3 eighths. So you guys know the trick here. Negative 2 and 1 fourth, that's going to be opposite or negative of 2 times 4 plus 1 all over that denominator 4. Instead of, And you can think of it as divided by negative 3 over 8. Remember, fraction is like an unfinished division problem. So if we continue with this, that's 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9, so that's going to be negative 9 over 4. Instead of division, you guys know, let's multiply it. That's going to be multiplying by the reciprocal. I'm going to put negative 8 over 3. Notice to keep that negative sign still in the numerator. Just makes it easier for everyone to see. Now negative times a negative, ooh, positive. So it's cool we have positives going on, so it's going to be positive times a positive. No, the answer is going to be positive. And let's do some cross-canceling if we can. 4 goes into 4 once. 4 goes into 8 two times, and then the same thing for the 9 and the 3. 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 9 three times, so it's going to be 3 times 2 over 1 times 1, which is just 6 over 1, same thing as just writing 6, and that's the answer for 24. Okay, we continue here. 7 times 8 plus 4 times a quantity, 7 minus 12, all divided by 9 times 6 minus 2 times 9. They're going to make us work for this one. Okay, so the first thing you guys know is parentheses. So everything else is going to be a spectator at this point. We have 7 times 8 plus 4. Well, 7 minus 12, I like to do simple math. I like to do 12 minus 7. I take 12 minus 7. I know it's going to be the absolute value difference between these numbers. Well, 12 minus 7 is 5. I take the sign of the larger number or the number that has a larger absolute value which is 12 so it's going to be negative so it's negative 5 okay and then we have 9 times 6 minus 2 times 9. now we continue with this and remember we have to do pemdas so we're going to do on the numerator multiplication left to right 7 times 8 is 56 4 times 5 is negative 20 so we can write that as plus negative 20 um, and the bottom, 9 times 6 is 54, minus 2 times 9 is 18. Now, a note about this. Some people will have a cow about positive times negative. That will simplify to a subtraction. So it's 56 minus 20 over 54 minus 18. Okay, continuing with this, 56 minus 20. If you're not sure about that, you can just do, hey, 56 minus 20. Just make it easy to visualize. 6 minus 0 is 6. 5 minus 2 is 3. So that's 36. 36 is left in the numerator. In denominator, okay, 54 minus 18. Okay, 4 minus 8 doesn't work, so we have to borrow. So that's going to be 4. And now we have a 14. 14 minus 8 is 6. 4 minus 1 is 3. Ooh, that's also 36. Cool trick. If you have the same numerator, denominator, that simplifies to 1. So the answer for number 25 is 1.